Welcome to part two of my motion graphics tutorial that I'm doing in Blender. If you haven't already seen part one where we do the modeling and the animation, go ahead and check it out. But this is where we're gonna be making some killer materials, setting up some awesome lighting, and then we can have a final render. So let's jump in and I will be uploading my final result to Patreon. All the links are in the description below. So to get started for our materials, we're gonna just go to the internet. Now, obviously you don't have to search this because I'm gonna put a link in the description. So there's gonna be a link to this hexagonal concrete paving over here. So it's already set up for Blender and then there's gonna be this one here, which is just a plywood, okay? Both of those are in the description below. All you have to do is come here and set your um, resolution. So I'm gonna just go with 2K. You can change it by default, it's gonna be set to Blender and you just have to download this. And essentially all it's gonna download is a zip folder. Inside of that zip folder is a blend file and some textures. And all we're gonna to have to simply do is put that extracted zip folder somewhere on your computer. And as long as you know where it is, the file path, when we're doing this tutorial, you can just go ahead and find it. Now I've already done that. I already have this in a library on my computer, but just so you guys know and you're able to follow along. These are the two we're gonna be using. They're very versatile as you'll see. So let's jump back into our scene. Let's go over to our render properties. We're gonna change it to cycles. And the device, GPU, only if you have a GPU, obviously. Um, or otherwise, just stick to CPU. And for the max samples, I'm gonna go 55. Now, going higher is gonna give you a better result, even with denoising. Um, you, you can only push the sample so low, but because I'm doing a tutorial, I generally keep it on the lower end just for time management purposes. And then we're gonna go Control B and just drag over our camera while we're in camera view. That's just gonna limit our rendering to the camera. So let's just start with our main lighting. So we're gonna go over to our world properties and go to the color here. Now you can go ahead and just use the sky texture and then go Z and then go rendered. And then you can see we have some nice lighting here. But for me personally, I prefer to go and get a environment texture. And by the way, if you wanted environment texture on Polyhaven, you can just go to the assets and go to HDRIs and just download an EXR file. And then as long as you know where it is on your computer, you can just go ahead, open and get one. But this is optional. You can just stick with Blender's sky texture. So I've got some, I know where they are, and I'm just gonna grab the one that I want. Okay, so now I have some HDRI lighting. So that's our main lighting, but we're also gonna go Shift A, add in an area light. And let's go G, Z, move it up. And let's go to our light settings. We're gonna give it a strength of 300. And we're gonna go and give it a size of two meters. And then we're gonna go G, Z, and move it up. And let's move it over to the side, rotate it in. And let's go Z, go render it, see what it looks like. And then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate that light, rotate it in, like so. And for now, we're just gonna leave it with these two here. Let's just start with some basic materials. So we're gonna go file, we're gonna go append. Now remember I was telling you about those uh, materials we downloaded from Polyhaven. For me, I've just downloaded the two zip folders into a collection of folders that I have. So the one would have been the hexagonal, which would have been um, this one right here. All right, so here I have the extracted zip, I've just opened it and there's a blend file in there. I'm gonna double click and go to the material and then click on hexagonal concrete pavers. And then the other one, file, append, and in this case, I keep it in the same library. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my plywood. I'm gonna go click on a blend file and I'm gonna to go to the material and click on a plywood. So now what's happened is they're appended into our scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this guy over here. I'm gonna go to my materials and I'm gonna to go to the drop down and give it that hexagonal concrete pavers. And now if we go Z and we go material preview, we can see this is what we have, but we wanna change the mapping. So let's go to our shading workspace and let's just come over here and we're just gonna do a few things. We're gonna come here to this hexagonal um, shader and we're just gonna come and change all of the textures to box where it says flat. So change it to box. And then over here, you're gonna change it, the texture coordinate to object. So now if we actually go over here and we go into our material preview, we can see this is what we have. And you can come over here to the scale, just drag the scale and type in value. And now you just have to come in here and type in a value manually. So we can go something like five, or you can type in one. I'm gonna go with one for now. So what we're gonna do now is with this selected, we're gonna go to our hexagonal concrete pavers here. We're gonna go ahead and go plus, and let's click on that again. But this time we're gonna click on a little number here, and that's gonna make it a second one. So that's the duplication of that paving. So it's dot zero zero one. And then we're gonna come in here 
And then we're gonna go up here to where the base color is and go Shift A, search, and get a color ramp. Place it on this cable and that's going into the base color of the principled. And then we're gonna grab this one over here and we're gonna make it a kind of darkish kind of green. Go a little bit darker and let's grab this handle over here and let's make that a darker green, but a bit more saturated, something like that. And then bring it down. And now let's tab into edit mode and let's just make sure this thing here is selected, the bottom box. Click on that second material and go assign and then tab back out. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, this is what we can see. We're now also gonna get plus and let's go to the drop down. Let's get that plywood that we've appended and let's tab into edit mode. And now let's just select this face and this face, click on apply wood and then go assign. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, with both of these selected, we're just gonna go U and unwrap. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we're gonna be able to see this over here like that. Let's tab back out. And now we're gonna continue with the rest of our materials. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna select our floor and we're gonna go over to our materials and let's give that the hexagonal concrete, but the one that we've edited, so the dot zero zero one. So now if we go Z and we go material preview, we can see that's added to the floor. And let's grab this backdrop here and let's go ahead and give, come to the drop down and give that to plywood. And let's tab into edit mode and press A and then go U and unwrap. And for some reason, it's looking a bit weird. I'm just gonna quickly go into my, over to my shading here and just have a look why it's doing that. Okay, I must have accidentally clicked on box instead of flat projection. But yeah, there we have it. So that's looking really good. And um, another thing we're gonna do is select our cylinder here and go new. And let's just give that a nice orangey yellow material, nice and bright. And let's go shift A search and get a noise texture. Plug the color into the roughness. And let's go shift A search and get a color ramp, put it over here. And then we're gonna go ahead into a material preview. And let's just drag these two together. Let's just bring the detail up here and the roughness. And let's just grab the vector here, drag it. Let's just type in texture coordinate and grab that. And let's just make sure it's generated as object. Now you don't have to add the noise here if you don't want to, you can just leave it as a yellow shader. But then we should have something like this with the roughness and that just looks quite a lot better. We then just have to go ahead, click plus, come to the drop down, add plywood. And then we're just gonna tab into edit mode and let's just select this and go I to inset it a little bit. And then E to extrude it in just a bit. And let's just go ahead and assign that plywood. And if you wanted to, even though we're not gonna see it, you can do the same thing on this side to go I to inset and then E to extrude in and then assign that plywood as well. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, that is what we have. So that's looking pretty cool. Now what we're gonna do is let's just grab our top cylinder material, this yellow one, and let's just select all of these nodes and go right click and go copy. And then let's click on these little inflatable things. Let's go new, delete these two nodes. Let's right click and go paste. Let's change this to a nice kind of dark green. And now let's go Z and go rendered and see what we have. That's looking pretty cool. I'm also just gonna go and grab this thing over here, go plus, and let's just add that new material, material.002. Tab into edit mode and then just select this face over here and go control plus. And for this little inside cavity, let's give it that same material. So it blends into these little um, inflatable pillars a little bit. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see this is what we have. Now another cool thing I did with my original is I went and add it in a plant. Now, if you actually go to polyhaven.com, you can go to their models and you can actually search in here. They do actually have plant models that are compatible with Blender. So everything's set up for Blender. You just have to append them like we did the materials. I already have my own plants, but I'm curious to see what you guys can do to make this unique. You can drag in any sort of extra object you wanted to, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and get one that I have. So this is optional, but adding in a plant, I think always makes these things really cool. I already have one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get it. But that's my challenge to you guys, to make this your own scene and not just, you know, parrot everything I do. Like, it's cool to get the overall concept, but like make it unique to you. Add your own flair, so when you look at your animation, you're proud of what you've done. So now let's go Z and let's go render it and have a look at that. 
that's looking really cool. I might just duplicate my lights a few times, like so. Get a few bit more lighting in there. And let's go um, to our render settings. This is also enable motion blur. And uh, yeah, let's give this a test render. So I'm gonna go render and render image. And here we have it. So um, one thing I forgot to do, which is add a material to these little rods here. That's really easy to do. Just add a shader, drag up the metallic value. I added, I think like a coppery looking material, but I mean, that is way more comp simple than these materials we've already added in. So if you can follow along so far, you could very easily just add your own choice of material and color to that. But this is it, and it looks just really, really nice. It's just, it was a really rewarding project to work on. And I will be uploading my original on Patreon. And I'll quickly show you guys, this is my original. Right? And it's pretty much the exact same thing. I didn't show you guys, I didn't do anything with this that I didn't show you guys in this tutorial. So I'll be uploading this one to my Patreon. In fact, I think some elements in the one we just did actually look better than my original, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this two-part motion graphics and um, I'll be uploading it to Patreon. You can also support me by joining Skillshare for free for a month for 100% free if you use my link in the description below as well. So I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.